Sergey, please tell me, was Alexei really a genius? Um, I think, and that's my personal opinion, yes, he was a man with a, a huge talent. Alexei was very gifted and fantastically hardworking. You know what one of the greatest people said, genius is 3% of talent and 97% of hard work. And my personal opinion is that, yes, Alexei was a genius. He was trying to play the piano when he was three. His bed was next to the piano and he was fingering the keyboard with standing on the bed. And uh, maybe at five, he could already hear false notes. Because my parents practiced all the time. In our apartment in Tashkent, we had a working room. As my parents work in the Tashkent Conservatory, they had to take shifts to watch the children. So dad worked at home and mom worked at the conservatory. And the next day was the opposite. Dad was in the conservatory and mama invited his students home. And obviously Alexei was listening to either a violin or a cello all the time because my mom is a violinist and my father is cellist. And of course he could already distinguish false notes. And uh, from time to time our cousin came to practice at our place and well, she wasn't very hardworking. So when she stopped playing and read a book, Alexei was telling her, Nargiza play Bach. Nargiza play Bach. At a young age, he wrote the first three lines of the Beethoven trio and brought it to the parents and said, Mom, I've written the Beethoven trio. Yes, he was too young, maybe, but still music sounded at our house all the time. We were all musicians, and we had students at our place. We grew up in this absolutely musical atmosphere, and his music skills appeared at a very early stage. And he started learning the piano. Well, at first, parents tried to teach him cello, and then violin, but it all ended with breaking a violin up the table. How come? He just took the violin and hit it at the table, and they decided he couldn't break the piano, so he'd be playing that instrument. Well, that's a joke, of course. And he started playing the piano, as he was more or less interested in it. At what age did Alexei start learning the piano knowingly and not just fingering the keyboard? Well, since four maybe, around four years old. When he was around six, we decided to take him to a teacher at the Republican Specialized Music School after Uspensky. Okay, Alosha, let's start from the very beginning. Please tell us about your seventh work. I've been playing since two with my ears, and at six, mom showed me to Tamara Popovich. So she kind of liked me and included me in her class. And thanks to her, I had my first concert. I played with the school orchestra under the direction of Vladimir Belenki. I played Mozart's Concerto 28. Then I played my first Beethoven concert at the Philharmonie. How old were you? Ten years old. At five six, he started to turn into a professional. 
mostly thanks to his teacher. This was Tamara Popovich, who worked in the Tashkent Music School. Actually, I saw Tamara Popovich's name in all the publications like she's kind of a famous person. I mean, it's not that she's an... But was she that valuable like they say in the articles? Actually, yes. Though it was a Tashkent music school, she was one of the best teachers in the whole Soviet Union. She was an authority. If you do some research, you will find out that Popovich's students perform all over the world, and they are all famous musicians. Did he have his first concert at 9 or at 8? Or at 7? At 7. How were you brought up? I mean, I used to go to a music school, but I wasn't motivated at all. I was made to practice. I didn't understand that it was important. I think all those people who play any instrument now were made to attend a music school. Were you somehow motivated or you and Alexei liked it? Well, I didn't like it. I was mostly made, but again, I'm a bit different. And Alexei was a very determined person. If he wanted something, he got it. He liked the lifestyle of concerts. He loved concerts. And at a very young age, he realized without practicing, there would be no concerts. And this was his motivation. Going out to the stage and playing, he was enjoying this. Did he have to practice a lot at the age of 7, 8, 9, at the very beginning? It depended on what he had to learn. At first, naturally, it was just 2 hours a day, then 3 hours, and eventually it grew into 6 hours per day. But it wasn't at a young age already. It was something that came gradually, step by step. Then it used to be 9 or 10 hours a day. We all work like that when we have to go out to the stage. A student of the Moscow Central Music School, Alyosha Sultanov, a boy from Tushkent. I hope to fulfill my main dream in the year of the 70th anniversary of the October Revolution and enter the Moscow Conservatory. I'm working very hard for that. Sometimes I practice for 10, 12 hours. What determines a man's path when he just steps into the life? And what conditions does a man's personality form? This is the story of a Tashkent-based boy, Alyosha. He was born in a family of musicians. He started playing from very young age. A wonder kid? Not at all. Just a very talented young man devoted to music. How did he leave Tashkent? At that moment, he was already studying in the Central Music School. In Moscow? Yes. And after the school, he was going to enter the conservatory. And at some moment, my parents decided that we were moving to Moscow because Alexei had to study in the conservatory and we had to be close to him. Isn't that a sacrifice? Somehow, yes, because my parents had to leave their jobs at the Tashkent Conservatory. That's the Central Music School of Uzbekistan. They had to sacrifice that to move to Moscow. They didn't know what to expect here, but it turned out quite well. Till what year did you live in Tashkent? Till 1986, I guess around that time. In 87 we moved. So that's the end of the Soviet era. Well, yes, at that time it was more free to speak, it all changed. How old were you? How old was Alexei? I was 11 and Alexei was 17.
We present you the report of the 8th international competition after Pyotr Ilyich Tchaikovsky. If we use musical terminology, this is an overture to a big fest of music, because this is one of the most respected music competitions in the world, and the number of contestants grows all the time. And the Tchaikovsky competition? Which one? The very first. Uh, 1986, if I'm not mistaken. So he was 17 back then. Yes, he was around 16 or 17, I think. The competition was in summer and Alexei's birthday is in August. So he was 16. The Tchaikovsky competition was the only platform at that time when a musician could perform on an international arena. The only platform in the Soviet Union, nothing else. And naturally, the Tchaikovsky competition was like, mm, I don't know, an Oscar? Yes, it was like an Oscar among musicians in Russia. This competition was the most expected event. It was an audition of the best musicians, and the winners of the competition were considered the elite. The elite of classic music in Russia. Oh, I mean the Soviet Union, not just Russia. That's why it was prestigious to take part in that competition. Yes, yes, it was very great, very prestigious. And all the Soviet republics were represented by their best musicians. And Alexei was performing from Uzbekistan. So this was a very important thing. And what exactly happened there? Well, it was a very funny situation from one hand, and uh, from the other hand, this was, of course, the tragic comedy of our life, as always. So, Alexei went through the draw, he got his number, and he went practicing. Now, everybody says it's impossible to break a finger with the lead of a grand piano, but it wasn't the lead that broke his finger. The grand piano has this big cover, uh, which has a wooden crossbar, so he raised the cover with his left hand and tried to pull out the stand with his right. At that moment, his hand slipped and he tried to pull it off, and he accidentally hit his little finger to that wood. So in the course of the Tchaikovsky competition, he broke his little finger. That was a crack right here, in the bone. But anyway, it's impossible to play because of the pain, right? Mm, yes, of course. At first, it's just the pain, but you might get some moving problems later. So, yes, we had such a situation. Then what happened next? Mom said, the hell with this Tchaikovsky competition? But Alexei said, I will be playing. That's it. I want to play. I will perform. Well, a lot of fuss started. The Uzbekistan representatives wanted him to play. They tried to persuade him. So, naturally, Alexei firmly said he would play. He wanted to perform. That's it. Mom said, your finger is broken. He says, no. Since three years old, it had been impossible to make him change his goals. And he was always saying, I'll do it on my own. He did everything on his own. So they decided to do something with this broken finger. They found a good sports doctor, Vladimir Snazin, who said there were several options. First of all, a cost for some time. Alexei moved back in the line of contestants to the last place so he could perform on the last day. He wore a cost 
and they said on the performance day they would take it off and freeze the finger. It would delay the pain for 5-7 minutes, then you were on your own. So Alexei agreed. So he was practicing in a cast at first, using only three fingers. And then when the time came to perform, the cast was removed, the doctor made an injection, and he went out on the stage. That's why after each composition, he went to the backstage to freeze the finger. I thought this was on the edge. And what was the outcome? He played. He played, but the judges decided not to promote him to the third round as they were worried about his finger. Only that. It's not like he didn't have enough points or something. The judges said that in the Tchaikovsky competition final, he would have to play two concertos, so they didn't want the musician to ruin his hand because of that. They worried about his hand. I think such an ambitious man like Alexei, as you describe him, had to take such misfortunes badly. They were motivating for him. He always liked to say, this was his favorite phrase from Alice in Wonderland. He takes all the running you can do to keep in the same place. If you want to get somewhere else, you must run at least twice as fast as that. That's his favorite saying, and that's how he lived. Any misfortune was a motivation to move forward. Bravery. Would... Where does it come from? On the opening day of the Tchaikovsky International Competition, Alyosha Sultanov was practicing in the large hall of the conservatory. He had raised the piano cover thousands of times, but suddenly an awkward move and the cover fell down. A stunning diagnosis, broken finger. But he performed anyway. He played with an injured hand and received a diploma. This is how a way up starts for a musician, for a man. What happened next, after the failed Tchaikovsky competition? No, well, it failed here, but didn't fail as he was noticed by German impresarios from Eastern Germany. They listened to him and invited him to Germany to have several concerts there. And as they say, 
every cloud has a silver lining. Alexei didn't make it into the final of that competition, but he was noticed by European impresarios and started receiving concert invitations in Germany. So he went to perform in Germany and uh, in 1989 he took part in the Kleibmann competition in Texas. Uh, we call it a Kleibmann competition. Yes, that's what they say in Russia. Von Kleibmann or Von Kleibmann? Von Kleibmann. And he was the first recipient of the Tchaikovsky competition. I mean, Van Kleiberg. Winning the first place, he came back to Texas and created a competition after himself. And this competition became one of the most elite competitions for piano players. Well, if in Russia and in the Soviet Union this was the Tchaikovsky competition, in the United States it was the Kleiberman competition and the best musicians competed there. There are no other nominations, only pianists. And so Alexei applied for the competition. To be precise, the conservatory applied for several students. So Alexei went to the United States in 1989. For Dord. He performed in the competition and won the first place. Is that a victory? Yes, he won the Kleibermann competition. And the gold medalist of the 8th Van Kleibermann International Piano Competition is Alexei Sultanov. The prize was a two-year contract all over the world. It means you are traveling, performing with the best orchestras in the world, you play solo, you have a concert in Carnegie Hall, that's the main theater in the United States. Did he have it all? Yes, of course. Did he perform in Carnegie Hall? Yes, yes, he played at Carnegie Hall. He had a big tour. But at some point, the Ghost Concert canceled Alexei's visa twice and didn't allow him to go to a concert. Alexei said, I'm staying there. So he decided to leave the country. Yes. Did he try to send him to the army? Yes. We have a mandatory service here. Alexei was going to get to the Marines as he was in a great physical shape. At that time, he practiced martial arts, he made 25 pull-ups, he was allowed a postponement until he graduated from the conservatory, after that he had to serve in the army. Once, as he was returning home, the customs officers of the Soviet Union checked his passport and told him, what are you doing here? You should be in the army. We're calling the police and you're going to the army. But Alexei had a box of Marlboro cigarettes, so he gave it to them and passed through. After that, he said, I'm more interested in having concerts all over the world rather than cleaning barracks. Was he already married at 20 when he was living? No, he wasn't. What about the story of jumping from attic to attic? Uh, it wasn't from attic to attic, but from roof to roof. Um, I'll describe the situation. Gorovitz was having a concert in Moscow. Vladimir Gorovitz is a genius pianist and an idol for Alyosha. And there was a rehearsal with spectators. It's uh, when musicians check their program in front of the spectators. Uh, 
And they wanted to get to that rehearsal very much, but they didn't. Unfortunately, they weren't allowed to, although usually the central music school students could do that. And the school and the conservatory were very close to each other, so you could literally jump from one roof to the other. That's when, when they decided to sneak to the concert. There was a group of young people who climbed up the boarding school roof to jump from it to the roof of the conservatory. It's not that far, and not that scary, it's just very high. You just had to get to the roof, and then from the attic of the conservatory chandelier, it was a huge chandelier, and which you could sit, sit on a chandelier? Well, not the chandelier itself, but the attic. You sit and you can see what's happening down there. That's what they wanted to do. Had they done that before? Yes. Yes, yes. All the music school students did that. If they wanted to get to the concerts. And Alexei liked extreme sports a lot as he was practicing martial arts. He had a Taekwondo black belt. How did he manage all that? <laughs> you should ask him how he managed. He learned driving very well. He piloted a helicopter. Uh, he loved base jumping. When you jump with a rope tied to your leg, he loved all that. He could drive a yacht, speedboats. He loved life in some sense and all that extreme. So let's get back to the story. To the roof, yes, to that evening. So it rained and they were all jumping and one of the girls slipped. Alexei caught her, but he didn't just catch her. He caught her for a lifetime. She was a cellist named Tatsi Abele. That's how they found each other on the roof of the conservatory's large concert hall. Alexei didn't let her fall down from the roof. Did he marry her? Did they get married? Yes, they got married, but in America. When he moved to the United States, he brought her there and they got married. What happened next? There was a huge concert activity. One of the leading companies, the Columbia Artists, signed a contract with him. They existed until recent times. It's just, there are no impresarios these days because musicians can sign contracts on their own nowadays. send out their videos, etc. Back then it wasn't like that. The company made a portfolio and the managers organized concerts all over the world. So you were under the wing of a big impresario company. And Alexei signed a contract with them and started touring. He had contracts all over the world, all over Europe, the United States and Japan. And at that time, he went to Japan and had concerts there. He became one of the most popular musicians there. Why? I've come across information that he has a huge fan base in Japan, that he was very popular there. Why is that? What's the secret? Why Japan? As a Japanese person once told me, they love perfectionism. And Alexei played almost perfectly during his concerts. But most of all, the Japanese love sincerity. Alexei was sincere on the stage from the first hit of the keyboard till the last note. That's why the combination of an absolutely perfect technique with emotional sincerity and dedication bribed the Japanese. And they still love him very much. Ask any Japanese musician or a person close to music if they know Alexei Sultanov. 
Their answer will be positive. Yes, we know him. We've listened to his records and so on. Do you have musicians in the family? Yes. My mom was a violinist and cellist. She teaches music at the Gnasenik Music School in Moscow. My brother is a pianist too. He's seven years younger than me. And my wife is a cellist. That's my... Another family. We live in America. Her name is Tatsa. She's from Latvia. And we have five cats and one iguana. They're also kind of a family. About today's program, you're playing Chopin and Liszt. Tell us about their works. I see. Um, the thing is, it's a very responsible and difficult program. I'm very excited before the performance. This is the first time I'm doing this program. The combination of two globally different works of Chopin, the Sonata and Liszt, the Sonata of Liszt, I think this is a very harmonious program and I hope I will be playing the right notes. Then there was the chopping competition. Yes, in 1995. In 95 there was the chopping competition. Well, where was he at the time? Where was he at the time? The US, but he participated as a Russian. Yes, he represented Russia in the competition. The chopping competition is Alexei's dream. Is that a big event, the chopping competition? Yes, it's one of the best competitions in the world. So we can say there's the Tchaikovsky competition, the Clyburn. These competitions are among the top ten in the world. And the chopping competition is one of the best. And Alyosha went there because, well, first of all, he loved chopping. And he played him a lot. He was also, he was always into chopping. I can say that maybe nobody played chopping like Alexei. You can listen to the records how he plays etudes, mazurkas. It's a new interpretation of chopping, we can say. I mean, Alyosha, mm, how to say it right, experienced chopping from inside and show that to the spectators and this made a huge impression on listeners. And of course the Polish spectators loved Alyosha too. Loved and do love him today. And there was a scandal during the chopping competition. A scandal? Yes, because Alexei wasn't awarded the first prize, although he deserved it. The spectators were applauding for 40 minutes after his performance. If you watch the video, you'll see that the host was asking the spectators to calm down so he could continue. But they were...
proszę Państwa, ja bym nie chciał tutaj wyjść, gdybym wiedział, że istnieje jakakolwiek szansa, że pianista jeszcze raz do Państwa wyjdzie. Why wasn't he awarded the first prize if it was obvious that he won? The spectators knew that and everybody knew he should have won, but he didn't. Why? Alexei played in his own way. The judges didn't like that. They thought chopping should be played differently, not like Alyosha. And he played with his own style which he shouldn't do, so we're not going to give him the first prize. What did he win? The second place. They gave it to him and another participant. He was first. Nobody. Alexei didn't take his gold medal. He refused. I mean, not gold, silver, of course. And he didn't play in the gala concert. And later he would come to the Tchaikovsky competition and he'd have a bigger scandal here. Really? What scandal? He wasn't allowed to the third round. Why? The judges. It was a very weird competition. After that one, the Tchaikovsky competition was nicknamed the Doransky competition. What competition? Doransky. Who's that? Sergei Doransky, a conservatory professor. He's the teacher of Denis Matsuev. Did you lobby him? Yes, he lobbied him. And for political reasons, Alexei was suspended because Dennis was supposed to get the first prize. So Dennis could win. He's a great musician too, but Dennis is an outstanding musician and a great pianist. But they just eliminated a strong competitor so that there was no doubt in his victory. Contestant number 15, Alexei Sultanov, Russia. Tchaikovsky. Tchaikovsky, Dumka, Composition 59. Frederick Chopin, Sonata No. 3, B minor, Opus 58, in four parts. Sergei Prokofiev, Sonata No. 7, B flat major, Composition 83, in three parts. The participant number 15, Alexei Sultanov, Russia. Next competition. They did not experiment on the jury. They chose the judges among the most reputable musicians. But still, it was impossible to avoid scandals. A bright pianist, whom the public loved, was not allowed into the final. It was Alexei Sultanov. Oh. He practiced martial arts and he had strong hands. I remember he played a passionata and smashed the keyboard with such strength. This was bad. This was not normal. It was a huge scandal. The papers made noise about the unfair decision. The chairman of the jury justified it by problems in the score system. He said, 
the lowest and the highest scores were cut and many members gave Alex a high scores so they were cut and the average score was not enough for the final so very mysterious yes is it true that he played 400 concerts in two years almost yes almost he had a schedule when he had a concert every two days so or a concert every week then two days and a concert during a tour he played a concert every second day then there was a break so yes four and breed from four to five hundred concerts a question people often say he had a demonic playing style did he really play in some unusual way we always put some special things let me put it right yes Alexei gave it all during playing almost rapturing his veins and he always played that way so probably it gave an impression of demonic style in combination with his absolutely perfect technique which he achieved thanks to 19 hours practicing per day he was sitting and working as the musicians say to the full as he was a perfectionist by nature he could not allow any dirty false notes any false notes or a missed key on the stage was a very unpleasant thing for him he cleaned them up to the extent that his fingers would obey him in any emotional condition I think that made a huge impression on the spectators when a person is so deep so emotional in his performance singing or anything else I mean he's emotional in his art the spectators have to go crazy for him was it that way yes of course it was Arusha made a huge impression on listeners because as he usually said I play for listeners not for professionals or someone else I play for listeners I want people to enjoy the music I play and so yes he made a huge impression on the public It seems he couldn't make it in his homeland and everything was great abroad. Well, actually, yes. Let's roll back a bit to the time when he was invited by the German impresarios to Germany. We had this organization that is named Ghost Concert, which controlled all the concerts in the Soviet Union. You should know that everybody signed contracts with Ghost Concert. And Alexei either earned a fee for a concert or daily allowance. 87% of the fee belonged to the government. And he was left with only 13%. Also, all visas were given through Ghost Concert. So all this was done by Gong Concerts, all paperwork. So on one hand, when Alexei returned from a tour, and he had to return because he was a conservatory student, he hadn't left it yet at that moment, because he had to work there in the West. And here we had quite a problematic system, because of which he couldn't have been included anywhere. He could not enter Philharmonie because he had to be a conservatory graduate and then he started having concerts in the West. And I don't know why, but Coast Concert didn't want him to let him go outside. Yes, they didn't want him to and they didn't allow him to go out on the stage. And then the country was already shaking, it was 89, 90, everything was unclear. In 1990, Alexei said he had enough of that because two concerts had failed by Ghost Concert and he said he would go and resign all the contracts on his own behalf and he stayed there 
Then he became popular. Let alone Russia. He became widely popular abroad. A pianist who is very famous. He's young. He's physically strong. He's so strong that they wanted him to become a Marine, which is a good indicator of his physical shape. What happened? What caused his physical shape to break? What happened to him? Well, again, physically... First of all, nobody is immune to a stroke. As you know, he had a stroke. The first signal was in Japan, when he woke up in the hotel and felt he was unable to move his hand. How old was he? Well, it was around 97 or 99. I'm not sure. 28, 27? 28, maybe. Yes. So, he couldn't move his hand, but he fell asleep. And in the morning, he was fine. His hand moved. There was no problem at all, everything was fine. But he told the impresario about the situation, and the impresario suggested he underwent a study. Alosha went to the hospital, he had his brain scanned, and the Japanese doctor said he discovered a small, tiny blackening in the head. In the brain? Yes, in the brain. So there was a situation that the doctor said he could not insist it was dangerous or not. Then he had a stroke in 2002. Alexei was hypertensive. He had increased blood pressure and probably something happened at that moment. Nobody is safe from such things. Yes, a vessel tore in his head and he was sent to the hospital. How was old he? Around 32 or 33. Then he was operated on. In America, they immediately operate in case of a stroke to clean all out. A torn vessel in the head? It was a stroke? Yes, a stroke. So the second one? Well, it's hard to say the first one had been kind of a microstroke, not a real one. He was operated on this time, but they miscalculated the dosage of sedatives. And his condition worsened. He felt sick and five vessels tore in his head. In the brains this time, in the hospital. And he got paralyzed. He couldn't move his left side at all. Left hand, left leg, the whole left side. And there were long years. Well, long enough. He was in rehabilitation till 2005 and it was getting better. We were glad that he felt better already. But in 2005, he passed away. He just didn't wake up. Was it another stroke? No, just his heart stopped. As his left side was paralyzed, doctors had warned us that there was such a risk, so his heart stopped in sleep. Some people think that talented people burn out quickly because they live a very concentrated life. Do you think that makes sense? I think it does somehow. Because Alyosha gave it all during his concerts. I've never seen musicians working so hard on the stage as if they live there. I mean, 
during the performance. He played as if he was the creator. And it did create on the stage. That's why probably all these constant emotions, I want to say it was stress, but when on the scene, but when on the stage, all this wore him out in some sense. You know the example of Andrei Mironov. He also died from a stroke on the stage. This is something that belongs to creative people, unfortunately, but that is very possible. Would you like Alexei Sultanov's name to be known in Russia more, or is it not important anymore? Of course, I would like to. I dream of creating a competition after Alexei Sultanov, and I'd like it to be held in Tashkent. I'd like to create an international competition after Alexei Sultanov, a one that would compete with Clyde Byrne in America. Today, right now, many years have passed, but Alexei still has a lot of fan clubs. Yes, in Poland, in Japan, I know personally these two fan clubs, they invite me to play concerts. Alexei still impresses them a lot. And interestingly, there is no average opinion about his playing style. You either admire his play or do not understand it. In this sense, Alyosha is still a perfectionist. Because nobody just says, well, yes, he's a good pianist. They either say he's a genius, he's a fantastic musician, or not. We don't accept his style. You can't play it that way. <laughs>